Hey YouTube, how's it going? Uh, today, we are going to be talking about uh, my NFL predictions and where I think each team will end up in this upcoming season. Um, uh, now that the NBA season is over, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit that, about that uh, a little bit later on in a separate video, or if you're on Twitch, the same stream. Um, and hold on, let me make sure I get that right. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Wait, I got Steam's giving me some, uh, like, oh, you got some updates. Okay, but... So I'm talking about my NFL picks today and their standings. I got a um, comment on this on TikTok from one of my uh, one of my like just ask me a question videos, and I figured that it would be great to do so uh, via Twitch because it just felt like it needed to be longer form. It would be really hard to try and jam all three minutes, like uh, all my thoughts on what the NFL season is going to look like or where teams are going to place in a single segment. So. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is, oh, and of course, if you if you uh, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit that bell, as all YouTubers supposedly say. And of course, if you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. But let's get into it. So let me make sure I got everything up here going. I actually, and I, I did a lot of work for this too. Actually, I did some pre work. Believe it or not, I got a. Uh, let me see if I can bring this. Up. Let's go display. Okay, got that up top. I'm going to see if I can bring this down. If I were to... So I am learning how to stream labs. There we go. Okay, and that's not what I want. I need the display. Nope, that's not what I want. I want the thing behind me. That's okay, I can edit this out of YouTube. So, don't want the load screen, I want the capture screen. Oh, move this over here. Aha, that's what it was. So it's kind of weird. Um, so I work, uh, my job requires me to do a lot of Zoom and Google Meets and stuff like that. And I always like try to have my screen on me so I can at least kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, it helps me monitor my own movements but okay here we go we are all set now so um when i went through and picked all of my teams like who i thought was going to win i went through each and every single game uh for the entire nfl season there's a couple like really cool prediction like machines online that you can go through and select things and i'll update the standings in real time it's fantastic if you haven't done so uh please do so and actually like if you do do it Eh, if you do do it, uh, go, I'm a child. Uh, put it down in the comments. Let me know what you thought or if your predictions ended up being the same as mine. Uh, one thing I found doing this, and this uh, I'll point it out as we go through the standings, but uh, there were a couple of teams where it's like, uh, you know, like, okay, so I'm just going to like, as Pitts, Pittsburgh, for example, I don't think the Steelers are going to be very good this year. I got brand new quarterback. Um, uh, fairly difficult division. I just don't think they're going to be that good. Now, if you asked me, how many wins do you think you're going to get without like going through their schedule and picking each one? Um, let's just say that's different than what ended up being the result of that. And I'll show you that once we get to um, Pittsburgh. But um, I did try to do this in the most academic sound way possible. So here, so I did take into account some biases and considerations when I made my pick. So here's what they are, and I will reveal them now. So for the first one, um, I picked every single game. So as I mentioned, I went through and used one of those projector things, um, picked every single game, uh, um, in the entire NFL schedule of every team. Um, again, it's really cool. You should go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, my next big consideration was um, strong favorability to the AFC West. The AFC West, I have, I don't think I've ever seen a single division get so strong in a single offseason. Some of their acquisitions have been absolutely huge. Like um, I found this uh, tweet just to kind of give you a rough example. So the Chargers acquired Khalil Mack, J.C. Jackson, Broncos, Russell Wilson, Ran, uh, um, Randy Gregory, the Raiders, Chandler Jones, Devontae Adams. Um, the Chiefs actually ended up getting like Juju Smith and stuff too. So they actually, while like losing Tyreek Hill is bad, um, they got at least a little bit something back in Juju Smith. And then I, I just, <laughs> all to be Jackson's brother. I appreciated that. Uh, hey, I'm on TikTok too. I can't hate on him too much. Although my dancing skills are nowhere near as, as cool or as uh, useful. Um, okay. Like that. Head back over here. 
Uh, my next big thing was uh, teams coming off bye weeks. When it came to a team coming off a bye, I gave them a ton of, of leeway, especially if they were at home. Uh, I think over the course of a longer season, I think bye weeks become a little bit more crucial. So if it's close, if it was like kind of a toss-up game, I usually gave it to a team that was coming off of a bye. Uh, next, highly rated home games, kind of the similar to um, the bye week situation. If a team was at home and it was a toss up, I just favored. I just I gave a slight advantage to the home team, as as Vegas usually does as well. Um, assumed nobody gets hurt. This is the one I kind of waffled back and forth on a little bit, uh, just because injuries are so difficult to predict in the league. Some are a little bit easier to um, predict than the others. Um, you know, you had the Madden curse all those years, and then you had. Um, uh, you know, you have some players that have been a little bit worse of an injury history. J.J. Watt, as an example, has not exactly had the greatest injury history, knock on wood, uh, for him. Um, but just for the, the sake of my picks, I, I just went ahead and assumed that nobody got hurt. I didn't take injuries into consideration uh, when making these picks. And then finally, this is just kind of a personal bias thing. Again, tried to do this as academically sound as possible. Uh here are my teams. I am a Raiders fan, a Seahawks fan, and a Bills fan. These are teams I just really like. And I guess quick background on that. Um, my dad was a Raiders fan back in the 70s and 80s, and that kind of just filtered down on to me. I've uh, been a Raiders fan my entire life. Um, likewise, uh, I'm, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so like the Seahawks have always been a team I've always really, really enjoyed and I really liked. Um, and then the Bills. I don't know what it is about the Bills and how I became a fan of theirs. I think it was just like, it's the lovable loser thing, if I'm being completely honest. And so, yeah, a number of years ago, I just kind of like started following them and uh, like way closer than I, I did any other teams, in addition to the Raiders and the Seahawks. And yeah, I am totally, totally on board with Bills Mafia nowadays. Um, Again, just wanted to acknowledge these because, uh, you know, when you see my standings, maybe that'll, like, give you some inklings. But without any further ado, here are my picks. Now, I'm not going to go through every single thing and talk about every, like, every single team in detail, but just to give you an idea of how things go. So the Jets, I think, are not going to be very good. I think Zach Wilson takes a step in the right direction, um, but ultimately, I still think there's going to be some questions at the end of the season whether or not he is going to be the quarterback going forward for the Jets, but I do think he has an improved season. I do think the Jets are more competitive in some of their games. I still think they're going to be terrible. <laughs> uh, likewise, Miami, I actually, despite how they ended last season um, and their acquisition of Tyreek Hill, after looking at their schedule, it just didn't pan out um, in, in, in a variety of different ways. Like it just seemed like whenever they were playing a good team, it was, it was away and there's, um, or if they were home, they were playing against, um, like a, a moderately good team. Their schedule wasn't super favorable and I'm not a huge to a believer. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, a great guy from everything I've ever heard about him. But I think when it comes to his football ability, um, I still have some questions. I could be dead wrong and Miami was honestly one of my bigger question marks. But when, at the end of the day, as I went through each pick, I, I just didn't have them winning too many games. Um, New England, I think they're going to take a step. In, um, they're going to keep taking steps in the right direction. I just I have a hard time picking against them. Maybe it's just because like, you know, I'm 35 and I grew up watching them just absolutely dominating everything. Um, for many, many, many years. I mean, even the year uh, Tom Brady got hurt with, and they had uh, Matt Castle, they still won 11 games. And I think Jones is a pretty promising quarterback, if I'm being honest. So I have them winning 11 games. Then obviously, I, come on, the Bills are going to absolutely, like, I, by all consensus, I think they are the best team in the NFL. Um, and I, I feel like I've seen this a ton, that a lot of people have the Bills coming out of the AFC to uh, represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. And then over here on the AFC North, um, so here's Pittsburgh. I have them winning two games. Now, this is what I meant earlier when I was talking about, uh, if you were to ask me, without me going through the whole schedule and picking teams, which team would, or how many win wins do I think Pittsburgh would have? Um, when it was all said and done, I would have been like, oh, you know, I don't think they're going to be very good, but I still think they end up with maybe, you know, five, six wins or something like that. When I actually went through their schedule, two W's. That's it. I don't think they're going to be good this year. Um, 
not necessarily a knock against uh, Kenny Pickett. I, I I have no idea how he's going to do. I love the story of the local guy um, going to the local college and then the local team, the local NFL team. I think that's great, but I just don't see Pittsburgh doing well at all this year. Uh, Cleveland, I think there's just way too many questions um, around their quarterback situation, especially the Deshaun Watson stuff. Um, if you're not aware of what's going on there, Google, it's pretty gross. Um, and I think they've burned every conceivable bridge they have with Baker Mayfield. I just don't see him. The next time Baker Mayfield takes a snap, it'll be for another team. Um, and that could be a conversation um, either on TikTok or on here uh, later on. And I think I've already made a video on it. I mentioned that I think he should go to New Orleans. But again, different conversation, different day. But I don't think he'll be taking any snaps for the Browns. So I believe it's the, who is their, um, it's going to be their third string quarterback leading the way. Uh, Jacoby... Oh, gosh, what is his name? See, like, so here's the thing. If you don't know a name, um, Brown's depth chart. If you don't know something, folks, it's okay to Google something. Um, How is his name? It's Jacoby. Oh, quarterbacks. We're looking at quarterbacks. Jacoby Brissett. There we go. Um, so, yeah, they're going to be rolling with Jacoby Brissett this year. And I don't think he's the worst possible backup in the world. And I think their running game and their defense is going to be very, very good. But I think that only takes them to about a 500 season. Cincinnati, I think they just pick up where they left off. I think they're going to be really, really good. But ultimately, I have Baltimore winning this division. Um, I just, I, I have, I, I think uh, Jackson's going to take another step in his quarterback development this year. I just think they're going to be extremely good. And they're going to be, it'll be close, but I think they will win this division. Uh, AFC South, the Houston, I still have them as the worst team in the league. I don't really have a whole lot of things to say about them. I think Jacksonville does take another step, though. Um, a small one, but I think they definitely take a step. I think Trevor Lawrence um, shows folks that he is definitely a very capable quarterback. Um, I don't think anyone's labeled him a bust yet, but I think this season he'll give him more of a reason Um people to think that he is definitely worthy of that number one overall pick. Uh, Tennessee, uh, I am I got some questions about them. Uh, I think they take a step back this year. I think last year they were pretty good. I mean, they were obviously really, really good last year, but I think this year they take a little bit of a step back. And that is largely because I think Indianapolis will be the team that comes out of this conference. I think um, the acquisition of Matt Ryan, and then you have um, uh, uh Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, who I think is also going to have a tremendous season. I don't think it was just a one-year thing. I have Indy winning this division um, pretty handily. Um, and then the AFC West. Um, this was a little bit of a surprise. And if you're wondering, dude, there, right there, that is the bias that I that you were talking about earlier. I don't think the Raiders are the best team in this division. I actually think the Chargers are the best team in this division. Um, the Raiders, in my opinion have one of the most favorable schedules I've seen. And what I mean by that is it seems like every time they're playing against a quality team, they're at home. They they have the home field advantage whenever they're playing a quality team. And every time they're playing on the road, they seem to be playing one of these teams that are going to win five, six games. So the Raiders, to me, are, are probably going to win this division, but I think they're also very lucky to have the schedule that they do. The one major loss that I do have them um, taken at um, on the road this year is when they play the Rams, and that's going to be a fun one because my brother is a big Rams fan, and I think he is – we, we got to watch it together. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Um, but I do think the Chargers are going to be the best team in this division. And in terms of like how I picked for this division, when it came to like, okay, who's better? The Broncos, the Raiders, the Chargers, or the Chiefs, or anything like that? Uh, to me, it was just straight up like, okay, three and three. I, whenever they played each other, I just picked the home game. So I have the Raiders and the Chiefs all being three and three um, in the division. But ultimately, the Raiders, at the end of the day, had the easiest schedule amongst um all his teams in the AFC West. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be an unbelievable team. Again, like when was the last time the bottom team won 11 games? Like that's, it's, it's just remarkable to me. And a team that's going to win 11 games and probably miss the playoffs. That it blows my mind. Uh, moving to the NFC. Uh, yeah, I, the Giants, I just don't really got a whole lot to say about them. Same with the Commanders, which by the way, they could have done better with the name. They, I, I'm like, it's, it's okay. I get it. It's very apropos to everything else they have um, 
with their uh, with all the other teams there in um, in DC. But I, I just I feel like they could have gone with a cooler name there than just the Commanders. It feels like they just settled. Uh, I think the Eagles will be okay. I also think um, they take a little bit because how many teams did they win last year? Actually, what was um, NFL standings twenty twenty two? And if I do have anyone watching right now, and if you happen to know this stuff off the top of your head, please feel free to throw it into chat. I am more than happy to take a look over there. Um, let's see, where did the Eagles end up last year? Philadelphia, Philadelphia. They won nine and eight games. Okay, so I actually have them being actually about the same they are uh, this year. Uh, Jalen Hurts, again, I don't necessarily think, I, I think there are still some question marks about him. Um Philly was one of the few teams I had that were kind of like in the middle, that middle bracket. I think there's going to be a lot of like haves and have nots this year. Uh, teams that are either going to be really bad or really good. And just a very small segment of them are going to be in that seven to nine win category. And the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be one of them. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, again, I don't think they're going to be that good. I mean, in comparison to what their expectations are going to be like last year, they were 12 and five. I don't see that necessarily being the case this year. Wait, was this last year? Yeah, 12 and 5. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, cool. Wait, then what am I going to 10 and 6? 16 games. Should be 17 games if I'm not mistaken. I wonder which one I missed. Either way, oh, maybe there was an error in the thing, but um, just for funsies here, 11 games. Um, just to round it all out. But nonetheless, I just, I don't think Dallas is going to, I think they're going to be around this, this mark anyway. I just don't have a whole ton of um, high hopes for them. So yeah, sorry if there are any Dallas fans in the, watching this later on. Um, this was also a surprise for me. The Vikings have, unequal, let me, let me start at the bottom first. I, I don't think the Chicago Bears are going to be that great. I think they, I, I just, their schedule is brutal. Um, Detroit's schedule, also pretty brutal. However, I think they actually take a step in the right direction in comparison to how they were last year. Um, if I remember correctly, they were in a lot of pretty close games. I think they actually pull a few of those out this year. Now, the Green Bay Packers, I think, are going to be one of the teams in contention to win the NFC North. I think they're really, really good, even though they lost Devontae Adams, um, I think Aaron Rodgers is an absolutely stellar quarterback. Uh, I have no reason to believe that the reigning MVP isn't going to compel his team to a incredibly solid season. But the Minnesota Vikings had the easiest schedule I have ever seen. And just, just to demonstrate my point here, check this out. Um, Minnesota Vikings schedule. My spelling is terrible, but that's okay. Okay. Like, just look at this. This is... I, I, I actually kind of started laughing at one point. So here's their preseason. Okay. So, okay. Game week. Okay. Regular season. Week one at home against. So they're hosting Green Bay. I think this will be a very, very tough one, but I think they do get it. Again, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, I think they're both going to be good teams, but ultimately I'm going to pick the home team just because I think it's going to be too close. At the Eagles, I think they get that W. At home against the Lions. At New Orleans, who I think is also going to be not very good this year. Hosting Chicago, W. At Miami, W. Hosting Arizona, W. At Washington, W. At Buffalo, I think that's one of their two losses. Hosting Dallas, W. Hosting New England, close, but a W. Hosting the Jets and Lions, or hosting the Jets, absolute W. Lion At Lions, W. Hosting the Colts, close, but probably a W. Um, hosting the Giants, absolute W. At Green Bay, loss. And then um, hosting the or going to Chicago, absolute W. Um, yeah, I just don't think that the uh, the Vikings have they have one of the easiest schedules I have ever seen, considering their their talent level. I think they're going to be really good. I think they're a really good team that's going to be viewed as great because of their favorable schedule. So, um, and I'll get to that in a little bit too. So, just really quick, we have two more NFC South. Uh, Carolina, I think they're going to be absolutely terrible. New Orleans, I think, is going to be absolutely terrible. Now, that being said, I may have to revisit this if Baker does go to New Orleans or if he is traded to New Orleans. I still don't think this is a great division at all. Um, I think Tampa is going to be incredibly lucky to be in this division. Well, I mean, they are incredibly lucky to be in this division already. Um, 
And I just think New Orleans is, and again, kind of like um, Pittsburgh, where I was, where if you would have asked me before, like, hey, how many wins do you think New Orleans, um, New Orleans gets without, uh, how many wins do you think New Orleans gets without going through their whole schedule and picking? I probably would have said five or six. Um, I don't even necessarily think Jameis Winston is like a bad quarterback or anything like that. I just think they have just way too many holes. And again, they're subject to a pretty tough schedule. So, um, although I do think Baker is better than, than Winston, uh, and just in my opinion, I, I think, uh, it'll also be a great test to see how good Baker is, you know, in, um, where is he? Cleveland in Cleveland. He has a great O line, great, great defense, phenomenal running game. And so there's a lot of questions of like, can Baker do it with a with a more mediocre team? And I think going to New Orleans in a weaker division will actually be able to um, paint a really good picture of how we good or not good uh, Baker is. Uh, Atlanta, I actually have as a um, kind of a surprise team this year. I think they a lot of people have them finishing pretty close to the bottom of this division. Some standings, I've seen them finishing at the bottom. Uh, but that being said... Mariota is a good quarterback. I still hold true to that. Again, I'll admit my bias. I, you know, I, I, I grew up a Ducks fan. I, I grew up loving Mariota. Um, but that being said, I, I do think that um, Atlanta will be taking good steps this year, largely behind um, Mariota and Pittman. I think Pittman has a breakout year. So, I, um, I might talk a little bit more about fantasy football on this stream later on, uh, maybe somewhere down the line. But the Falcons, uh, I think, are going to be on the up and up. And I think Pittman, if he's available in your fantasy drafts and you can get him somewhere in the mid-rounds, do it. I think he will pay dividends. Um, he might actually be my keeper this year. The fantasy league I'm in is a um, – we play an IDP league. Uh, so what that means is an independent um, defensive player league. So you can pick – Two keepers, one offensive player and one defensive player, so long as the player wasn't drafted in the first three rounds. So for me, I think I drafted Pittman in like the sixth round last year um, because he was a rookie. I don't think a lot of people knew who he was. And a lot of the guys that I play fantasy football with aren't big college football guys. So um, I went ahead, picked him up, and uh, didn't have a great fantasy year last year. But I think this year he's going to be really good, so I'm keeping him. So a uh, little random uh, fantasy football uh, bird chasing uh, term there. And then Tampa Bay. I mean, what else do I have to say about them? I think they are going to be probably one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NFC this year. Uh, Tom Brady in his, um, uh, farewell tour. I think he's absolutely going to be tearing the, the NFC to shreds. Uh, and then finally the NFC West, but I do try to be as objective as I possibly can. Um, that's why, hey, I still have the Seahawks down here at the bottom. Um, a Seahawk, you know, I, again, Pacific Northwest guy. I love the Seahawks. I don't think they're going to be as bad as I think some folks make them out to be. I think the Seahawks will be in a lot of games. Clo they'll be in, they'll be in a lot of games um, more than they're going to get blown out, and I think they're going to be able to snag some of those games late. Uh, I'm also curious to see how Drew Locke. Um, pans out uh maybe he just needed a change of scenery from denver but we'll wait and see but ultimately at the end of the day i don't have seattle um going very far this season about uh, you know winning six games arizona this is kind of an interesting one i know that uh you know kyler's coming out of that contract year i i imagine he's gonna re-sign for arizona um i haven't checked the news he may have already but uh the loss of deandre hopkins is Bad. I think how many games is he suspended for? Six or eight? DeAndre Hopkins suspension. How many games is he suspended for? Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, I don't look at it. How many? How many games is DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, Arizona, DeAndre Hopkins is suspended. Si okay, so it's six games. Okay, so I was right there. I thought it was six games. Um, or I thought it was like seven or eight, but six. Okay, I, I stand by my, my my stance, though. I think they are going to be missing him big time. Uh, I do think their defense is still good. Um, I do have questions about how... I don't... Again, I don't want to assume J.J. Watt is going to get hurt. You know, knock on wood. But 
I do think he is going to not be as productive as he has been in previous years. He'll still be good, but ultimately the Arizona Cardinals are going to be in a lot of close games, but without DeAndre Hopkins there, who is going to be one of the leaders on that offense, I think he, I think they do take a step back. San Francisco, I think they're going to be good despite their quarterback controversy, you know, like, you know, controversy. We'll see what happens with um, Garoppolo. We'll see if he ends up going somewhere and if Trey Lance takes over. Um, and of course, I still have the Rams uh, winning this division. I think they are, they're still, I mean, they're, I, as far as I know, they're bringing almost everyone back. Um, I think Odell Beckham Jr. is the only question mark there. Oh, hold on. Woo, excuse me. Sorry. I love these like sparkling ice things, whatever. Like they're, they're delicious, but yeah, the, the bubbles. Absolutely love this beverage. Um, okay. So, that is, so to answer, that is my long answer to that TikToker's question um, to me uh, about, about like two weeks ago, I think. Um, but bonus part to this, um, here's how I think the playoffs are going to pan out. This is what I think is going to happen. Oh, hang on. Let me move my, move my face down. Okay. There we go. Okay. So uh, let me just help clear those. Okay, that's pretty clear. Okay. Uh, sha, 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 sha. Got this. Got this. Cool. Okay. So, here is what I think is going, what I think it's all going to ultimately end up looking like. So, in the AFC, I think the Bills go ahead and take the, um, take the number one seed. I, I don't think there's a whole lot of questions about that. And I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people who, I think most people would agree with that. Um, I have uh, three out of the four in the AFC West making the playoffs. That being said, I do think that uh, this is going to be a random one or a weird one because Kansas City missing the playoffs after 11 wins is it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one. It might actually lead to a conversation about maybe expanding the playoffs, maybe actually having kind of like a like an NBA or NHL style where it's like 1v8 or something like that. And then the in the first round, you have like the Bills playing Kansas City in round one. And who wouldn't want to watch that? That sounds incredible. That, that would be must see TV. Um, and then we have Baltimore, Los Angeles. OK, so let's go ahead and make these picks. So Buffalo, obviously, they get by. Baltimore Chargers. So it'll be Baltimore hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. This is kind of a tough one. I'm making these picks live, so give me a minute here. Um, I think Baltimore's going to be really good at home. Baltimore has amazing fans at home. Uh, yeah, I think that might be the end of the road for the Chargers. So I'm going to go ahead and move them. I think they'll end up going here. So for those of you who don't know about the way the NFL works, um, well, let me do this first. Indianapolis Broncos. Indy, again, going to have a great year. They win their division, but ultimately they're going to be going up against the Denver Broncos. I think the Denver Broncos get by. However, because they are the lowest seed, that remaining, and I'm kind of burying the lead here a little bit, so, oh, but oh well. Um, they have to go play the number one seed, the lowest. So it, the second round, once you get to the divisional round, reseeds. So the Buffalo Bills will be taking on the Denver Broncos. And like I said, kind of buried the league, but I think the Raiders do get by New England. I think it'll be an incredibly close game, but I think playoff game in Vegas, give me the Raiders. Um, and then what you have here is, oh, hang on, I gotta make sure I gotta see. It would be Raiders versus... Baltimore. There we go. So then you have the Buffalo Bills versus Denver. You have the Buffalo Bills specifically hosting the Denver Broncos. This is, oh, man. Honestly, I think Russell Wilson is going to have a little bit of a down year this year, but I still think he'll be really, really, really good. I I can't go against the Bills. This like the Bills are just so stacked. And oh yeah, because this is going to be um. Oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Von Miller. Von Miller is going to be playing against his former team. Give me... Oh, man. I still... Yeah, Von Miller for the Buffalo Bills going against his former team. Give me Buffalo, I think. I think that might be the deciding factor there. I can see the game ending. Denver gets the ball. Final 30 seconds, two timeouts. 
you know, they got the ball on their own 20 yard line and it comes down to about like, you know, five seconds left, final play of the game. The Denver Broncos are on the 30. Von Miller gets the sack on Russell Wilson to send the Buffalo Bills to the AFC Championship. Like, how poetic and sweet would that be? That would be so much. Oh, that would be so fun to see. Um, okay. Vegas Raiders at Baltimore. Uh, again, I'm pretty high on Baltimore this year. I think they're going to be quite good. Um, I'm pretty high on the Raiders being at home, though. And so off that virtue alone, I think I might have to go Raiders, Bills, and just, I think for my own pain, this is what I'm going to be witnessing. Buffalo Bills versus the Las Vegas Raiders in the AFC Championship. Um, I got to decide if I'm even going to watch this game, if I'm going to wear my Bills shirt and my Raiders scarf. This is uh, tough, but ultimately I think it's the Bills year. Give me the bills. Okay. Heading over to the uh, NFC. Okay. Tampa gets their bye. Fair enough. Dallas Cowboys, Green Bay. <laughs> Dallas, despite being a four seed and at home, I think give up the goat to Green Bay. I think Green Bay goes through. Um, Los Angeles versus 49ers. This is going to be a fantastic wild card game. Uh, Los Angeles Rams hosting the San Francisco 49ers in the California Derby. Just because I, I don't know, I don't know how much of a rivalry there is between. Well, I mean they're in the same division, so yeah, absolutely. I'm going to call this a derby or a rivalry. Um, ultimately, though, give me the Rams. I think the 49ers put up a hell of a fight, but I think the Rams get by. Um, Minnesota versus Atlanta. If there was an upset game, I have in this, a two seed losing to a seven seed, it might be the Vikings losing to Atlanta. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I think the Vikings will, at home, beat an ascending Atlanta team, but I don't think Atlanta is quite there yet. Give me the Minnesota Vikings, who will be hosting the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Divisional Playoffs, which puts Green Bay at Tampa Bay. We're going to get it one more time, folks, and I'm pretty confident with how this looks um, so far. How great is it going to be to potentially see one more time Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers in the NFC Divisional Round? Um, this, this will be probably the most watched game in the NFC Divisional Round in, in years. Uh, this will break a lot of viewer ratings. But ultimately, though, in Tampa Bay, I think Tom Brady gets the gets the go or gets the uh gets the win there. It'll be very close, but it'll be good. I think the I'm not gonna beat around the bush with this one here. Unlike the this divisional round game, I think Minnesota and the Rams is pretty Okay, I'm sorry, that was my wife telling me she is at her doctor's appointment. Um okay. Give me the Rams. I think Minnesota loses it at home handily to the Los Angeles Rams. Again, the thing was with, with the picks that I made or with the uh, the way the uh, the records turned out like on all these things. Like, uh, let's see. Hold on. I got to find it. Where is the uh, – it is the NFC North. Minnesota is not this good. They are a phony 15-2 team. And similar to the AFC West or the NF or the um yeah, the AFC West, where I even though I think the Raiders are great, are gonna be great this year, I think the Chargers are the best team in this division. Um I do think they do because again, they're kind of that ascending team. I have questions about how good they'll do in the postseason. Um that being said, uh Minnesota is an absolute fraud. I think for at least they're a fraud for 15. They're a good team. They are a fraud at 15 and two. They're a fraud elite team. Um, and then we get the NFC Championship game between Tom Brady and Matt Stafford. We get round two. This is this is going to be the tough one. Um, it's a little chalk, but I think Tom Brady gets his revenge. And we have the Buffalo Bills versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 
the Super Bowl for the 2023 season or 2022-2023 season. But who wins this? I've I've thought about this um, for a while because this is kind of the matchup that I anticipate happening. Um, I think there will be a lot of distractions around this being potentially Tom. I mean, not potentially. This will be Tom Brady's last game, I think, because I believe he has already a contract with Fox Sports uh, next year. Yeah, he already has a... um, uh, Hold on one second. Uh, let's hold on. I thought something was glitching here for a second. Oh, okay. Nope. Never mind. We're good. Okay. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of distraction around Tom Brady and his ability to, or and um, this being like his last game and his last game being a Super Bowl. Ultimately, so I'm gonna hold on. I gotta. I got the little color thing in the background as streamers need. There it is. Got to go blue. Give me the Buffalo Bills winning. Then oh, that might be an omen. <laughs> Watch, watch the the I I, I pick Buffalo. I accidentally um, copy and paste Tampa Bay into the winner spot. They win it. Um, that's maybe that's just fate telling me that, dude, you're wrong. And who am I kidding? I probably am. But I love making predictions anyway. So, uh, yep. There's there's my picks. I have Buffalo winning Super Bowl. What is the next Super Bowl? Uh, what number is the next Super Bowl? Uh, Super Bowl. Is this Super Bowl 53 or 54? Where is it? Super Bowl LV, LIV. What is this one? Nope, I don't want that one. I want next year. Nope, Kansas City. Nope. LVI. I need LVI2. Uh, Super Bowl. Oh my gosh. Hey, chat, if, you, if there's anyone in chat and you happen to know, please feel free to post it because... I'm bad at this. I'm just going to say the Super Bowl. Oh, who am I kidding? I am invested now. Okay. Uh, LV in Roman numerals. 57. It'll be Super Bowl 57. I don't know why I just didn't Google that first place. But, yep, in Arizona, you are going to have the Buffalo Bills triumphing over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it'll be an incredible Super Bowl, though. Um, I do think this is the year the Bills do get it done, though. And I I, I can't wait. Personally, I'll be wearing my Bills shirt the whole way through. So, again, a little bit of a chalk pick, but ultimately, just when it comes down to it, um, those are what my thoughts are. And I think that's actually probably a good place to end this video already. It's already kind of a long one. But um, I'll get better at streaming and doing YouTube videos as I go. Um, I wanted to do this as, as opposed to doing just like any of a more, um, just kind of a more like standard YouTube video, just because I like the authenticism of like communicating with people and doing stuff in chat when I potentially have people in my chat, maybe sometime in the future. But nonetheless, uh, this is what I have. So anyway, uh, thank you again um, for tuning in to this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. Um, but thank you so much. All right, I'll see you in the next one, folks.